Nübüvvet, hakikat arayışında peygamber ışığı. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Esselamu Aleyküm ve Rahmetullah. Good morning to everyone. Um, in my paper, I will attempt to present Said Nursi's philosophy on religious uh, universality. And um, I will concentrate on how does how how Nursi weaves universality of Muhammadan message, what notions and elements he uses to explode the universality of Islamic message. Before I proceed, uh, I have to tell that universality itself is a controversial issue. But I'm not going to go into details of that controversy. I would rather concentrate on Islamic and, and um, more about Nursi's concept on Islamic universality. But just to say a couple of things about Isla Islamic universality in general, um, the first thing I'd like to point out that the message of the Quran is a message to humanity. The Quran talks about Ya Ayyuhan Nas rather than Ya Qawmi, Ya Qawmi. Even in the Meccan period, according to Islamic Mufassirun uh, commentators, scholars, that when Muhammad, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had difficult times with the tribe of Quraysh, Quran's referral or addresses humanity in general rather than Quraysh or Meccan people to favor them, honor over others, etc. It was in short not the Quran for Arabs or Islam for Arabs or any other nationality. It was not regional or tribal, it was rather universal. There are many elements that we can draw out from the Quran in, in, in this regard. It was and is also timeless in this sense. Islam, after skipping out some parts because of the time restriction, I also have to say about uh, the following point, that Islam also assigns the religion of all the previous prophets in general and the final form of the same religion sent to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in particular, who appears at the historical end of a whole chain, we call it silsila, of plenary prophecy. So he was not one and only prophet of Islam. We, in this sense, we can call since Prophet Adam till the last Prophet Muhammad وسلم, all the prophets were Muslims, or have been, they, they, they have been Muslims. And with that, um, I have some verses, but I'll skip them out. You can find it in the, in the whole paper over the website. I think it is going to be published there. Uh, but just quickly going about some verses, Islamic scholars uh, have drawn out of these verses from the Quran to show how universal Islamic message is. Uh, just going to the last one, and I've gone through different uh, tafsirs, but particularly Al Malala's tafsir, and I'd like to go to the very last one. And we did not send you, but to all people as a bearer of good tidings and as a warner, but most people do not know. According to Al Malala, this ayat in particular is used by Mufassirun, Quranic commentators, interpreters, among the verses that show Prophet Muhammad's prophethood was not only for Arabs, but for all humanity. And also we can uh, have similar approaches or conceptions um, in the Sunni and Sufi tra tradition. I am going to concentrate on Nursi, so I am going to cut out that part as well. We know that Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi from Turkey, uh, from Konya, has spoken out about the universality and now and the compassion of Islam uh, in a universal way, and also Muhyiddin in Arabi and other Sufi, and we can see uh, their approaches, uh, that they've been evaluated in different academic studies as well. But uh, with that, what I would like to say, just one hadith that Nursi particularly talks about it in his Damascus sermon, Hutbe uh, Shamiya, 
when he refers to the hadith, I came to perfect morality, uh, I find the Nursi's referral to the hadith above mentioned very meaningful for that it was the primary, according to Al Malala and other Mufassirun, for a most important job of all the prophets that they came to perfect morality. And in fact, it is claimed that with, uh, with the perfect morality, human beings will deal with each other perfectly. So you don't need a democratic system or anything. Uh, and when we look at the Quran, that it doesn't really give much detail about how to govern or how to sort out our problems between each other. It gives general commandments, instructions, and but it, talk, it rather talks about perfecting of morality so that we can also sort out our problems. Nursi also uses this hadith and develops uh, on this issue in his later Risale Yenur. And he also, in the same uh, work in Damascus Sermon, uh, elaborates this issue by stating that a general conscience, Vijdana Umumi, he says, in this century is damaged by the attacks coming from atheistic materialistic philosophy and it needs to be healed. So now Nursi and universality. According to Nursi, the truth, when I say the truth, the in uh, capitals, the truth is one, but understanding of the truth is not one. The understandings may be many, and can have different forms according to time and place. Even sacred laws, um, he talks about it in the 27th word, change according to the ages. Indeed, in one age, different prophets may and have come. There were even different prophets and laws in the same continent in the same century, preaching the same religion, with the core being the same in different contexts. Mursi particularly addresses Islamic universality in his early writings, especially in the first side period. And in this regard, just to mention that, uh, as you can see the points in this slide, um, following on to that with this slide, what Nursi says, uh, there is even deeper and stronger ontological connection that uh, ties human beings Humanity and Islam. He uses Insaniyat Kubra and Insaniyat Sura. In his own words, Islamiyat is supreme humanity. Islamiyat is Insani Kubra. In other words, Islamiyat is like reflection of humanity, he says. According to him, the fruits of civilization, which is like Insaniyat Sura, he says, like minor humanity, if we can translate it literally, is like an introductory part of supreme humanity. Therefore, Islam, which is supreme humanity, is a general mercy to all human beings. It is in this sense Nursi maintains that reflection of supreme impartial justice, Adalat Mahsa, that resides within the bounds of Islam, which is supreme humanity, will dominate the future of the realm of existence up until the end of the times, he says. This is also that I, uh, I wanted to talk about, but I'll have to skip out and rather concentrate on the four elements, four universal teachers that Nursi used for Islamic universality. Um, but uh, please bear in mind, these, these two slides are the comments made by Professor Thomas Michel, the ex-secretary uh, for interfaith dialogue. Um, to the late Pope John Paul. And uh, he, Nursi, just to say the list, that Nursi was instrumental in promoting interfaith di dialogue. He started talking about it in 1911. He said that we have to come together with the Ahl, Ahl Kitab, the, um, the people of the book, to find the common grounds uh, against the common enemy of atheism. Um, and he was very instrumental. He sent his writings to the Pope and got a response, and, and, and uh, that was included in, in his writings, in, uh, in one of the books. And um, just skipping that, 
Right. Uh, these elements so far have been used by many speakers, but I would like to address them in a different uh, perspective. That. Um, okay. And also, I have to be quick. Among the many elements, uh, the most widely known proof of God, according to Nursi, is the cosmology. And Colin Turner addressed this yesterday in great, great depth, so I am not going to pay more attention, much attention on this point. But Nursi describes the cosmos or cos cosmos as a vast book or a cosmic book, uh, showing the oneness and the one unity of God. As the man being traveler, traveler travels through the universe, questioning each of its realms and learning of their testimony to the divine existence and unity. And then his belief gains universality, strength with each degree, and passes from taklidi iman, imitative belief, to the degree of certain and hakiki belief. In his interpretation of the verse mentioned in the previous slides uh, from the Quran, and there is nothing but it glorifies him with praise, Quran chapter 17, 4 to 4, Nursi writes that everything has numerous aspects that give up knowledge of God like windows. What matters is though, when approaching the cosmic book, one needs to analyze and read the book correctly either by manaya harfi or manaya ismi, self-referential or other indicative. For Nis Nursi taught, Quran uses a language that develops man an ability or a set of mind to look at things not for themselves but for the creator, in the account of the creator. And whereas materialism misguides man to look at the things with manai ismi for themselves. And there is a beautiful comment, Nursi makes it, I'm sure you, may, you all may know it, at the end of the seventh word, I'm going to say that in Turkish first, Kainat mescidi kebirinde Kur'an kainat okuyor. It's a beautiful statement, and in English, the Kur'an reads the universe in the vast mosque of creation. And also he conceptualizes Quran as Hafiz, uh, memorize the Quran, reading the signs in the pages of the cosmic book written by the pen of power. The second one I'm going to skip out, uh, and the third one is prophethood, the subject matter of this conference. Just uh, I'll have a minute or two with this one. The primary duty of the prophets, according to Nursi, is to teach man the meanings of the creational science, which comprise the created realm. In other words, the vast book of the universe, cosmic book, cannot be understood properly unless it is read properly with Mana Yaharfi, and in one sense that prophets are sent to teach the people how to read the science and interpret it correctly. So in, in, when, when Nursi approaches cosmic book and prophethood, what he puts into the context is the spirituality of what they signify, what they mean, what is, what, what, why they are so important. So Nursi, in short, offers us a practical and ideal model by which we can glimpse the actual embodiment of the names and their practical implications, Colom, the example of the prophet. And the fourth uh, and the last element that I'd like to talk and this is also a beautiful comment that he makes in, in one of his earlier writings in the Masnavi, and you can quickly go through it before I skip to the last point. As a universal teacher, uh, the Quran, according to Nursi, makes known to man his sustainer. It is the pre-eternal translator of the great book of the universe. The key to open the treasures of divine names concealed in the pages of the earth and the heavens. Nursi argues that the phrases of the Quran are not restricted to a single or two meanings, that is, I think, in Munazarat or Muhakkamat that he talks about it. Rather, since the Quran addresses all levels of mankind, its phrases are like universals, holes, which comprise meanings for each level. 
And he, he, he also makes the following comment that our nationality is one body, its spirit is Islam, and its reason is Iman. Sorry, Quran, he says. For him, all the problems of humanity find their solutions in the Quran. And there is a beautiful passage at the beginning of 25th word, but I cannot go through that. It's like 20, more than 20 lines uh, with commas, just one sentence describing what the Quran is. And I would really appreciate, highlight, and emphasize you go through that and you find great depth in it what the Quran really signifies and how it has got the testif testif um, uh, the, the previous prophet's teachings and etc. etc. in it. Concluding, it is important to point out that Mursi was not a Turkish or a Kurdish nationalist. So was he not a pro-Muslim nationalist, in other words, Muslimanji neither. The emphasis in Nursi's writings rather moves to the truths of belief and Islam than Muslimness. The truths of Islam and belief, according to Nursi, will dominate the future. So he advocated Islam as a universal panacea, and in him, Quranic spirituality, rationality, and universal morality have found a healthy synthesis. Even though it's open to discussions, analytic studies, critics, more importantly, his works would show the breadth of the Islamic intellect and above all, the foundation of Muhammad wasallam prophetic message in reconciliation, kindness, human understanding, and universality. Thank you. İstanbul İlim ve Kültür Vakfı